Hi, Fingers. I'm so glad to be here with you. I heard you were learning about something really special right now. I heard you were learning all about trees. Did you notice something? I drew a tree and labeled its parts for you. I thought it would be fun for us to think about that before I read a really beautiful story about a tree, a special tree today. My tree is pretty big, right? I drew the different parts of a tree. We know that trees start as a seed and as they grow, they turn into big adult trees and adult trees have roots and the soil and then they have a trunk and on top of that trunk, they have what's called the crown and on the crown, you'll find leaves and branches, of course, that the leaves are on and then we have flowers and the spring flowers grow and the flowers turn into fruit and inside of that fruit we'll find seeds and guess what happens to that seed it gets distributed onto all kinds of places by animals wind people and those seeds might grow into new trees if they have just the perfect amount of sun, water, and soil, they could become new trees. So I brought a really beautiful book that's gonna help us learn about trees too. And it's a fiction book, but it's told in a way that can help us also learn some facts about trees. It's a beautiful story called A Grand Old Tree. And when I heard that word grand, I was like, hmm, maybe we should talk about that word even before we start reading. Grand means something is really big and incredible and awe-inspiring. It's huge. It would be something that you might say, wow, wow. You might have a grand idea or you might see a grand tree. So it's something that's really big and incredible. And you would say, so we're going to be thinking about that as we're reading the story and listening and thinking about how grand the tree is because it's a pretty grand tree. This story is about kind of the life of this special tree. And when we learn about the life of this tree, we can learn about the lives of trees that are all around us. So let's get to it and start reading so we can learn from this story some new things about trees and good learners are always reading to learn more so i love that this story a grand old tree by mary newell de palma does a nice job helping us learn a little bit more about trees and a really beautiful story that we get to listen to all right so here's the title page a grand old tree by mary newell de palma and she wrote the words and she also created all these gorgeous illustrations. Here's her dedication page. Here's the first page. Once there was a grand old tree. Her roots sank deep into the earth. Her arms reached high into the sky high into the sky. She was home to many creatures. Birds nested among her branches. Squirrels scurried through her leaves. Caterpillars and ladybugs crawled about. Oh, so I'm learning some things that could live in trees. What are some creatures that could live in trees? Did she, what did the author say? What do you see in the picture? That's squirrels and birds. I know, a ladybug, caterpillar. Wow, that's just some of the things that can live in trees, right? The grand old tree flowered. Oh, look at all those flowers in the tree. And the bees in it. And bore fruit. Oh, it grew fruit. Look at the squirrels gobbling it up. And sowed seeds. She had many children. Oh, so her fruit is falling off. Animals are scurrying to get it. Squirrels are digging it and putting it in the soil 
and hopes that they'll remember that they're there later and can nibble on them in the winter. So her seeds get planted. They changed the landscape for miles around, perhaps even farther than the old tree knew. Wow, look at the new trees, all because of her. The grand old tree lived a long time. She basked in the sun, bathed in the rain, swayed in the breeze, and danced in the wind. Oh, look at how she's changing. She started as a little tiny tree, and she's grown. I can see how the seasons are going. There's winter and spring and summer and fall. And there it goes again. She grew and shed many millions of leaves. At last, the grand old tree was very, very old. Her branches long, no longer swayed and danced, but cracked and snapped in the wind. Finally, she fell and snow gently covered her. The old tree died. She no longer flowered, bore fruit, or sowed seeds. But she was still home to many creatures. Raccoons nested in her trunk, centipedes crawled along her branches, and lichen grew on her bark. There's that raccoon. Oh, there's the mushroom she didn't mention. Looks, there's like a centipede. Lichen. Oh, and I see a little mouse. So she's continuing to provide a home for animals, even as she has fallen over and died. The grand old tree slowly crumbled. She became part of the earth. So her, all her branches and leaves and her trunk crumbled up and became the soil. Today, the roots of her grandchildren seep deep, deep into this earth. Their arms reach into the sky. So now a new tree has grown in her soil. They are home to many creatures. Just like the grand old tree. So what happened to this tree? What happened to this grand old tree? Can you think about how her life went? And how that might be the life cycle of a real tree? Mm. At first we met the tree and she was an adult tree, right? She was big and like an adult tree. And we notice things happening to her. Things lived there. She grew flowers. And those flowers turned into fruit that spread across the land that made new trees, right? And then as she grew and grew, she also became old and she died, right? But that wasn't the end of her legacy. Nope. She died, but continued to be a home for animals as she turned into soil. And that soil made it rich for new trees to grow. So then a new tree could grow in that soil. A little seed could grow into a small tree that became an adult tree that grows into a tree that has flowers and fruit and that fruit again has a seed and the cycle goes on and on. Wow, we learned a lot from this story. I love this story. Remember readers that books can teach you so many things. So find some good books and read and learn some more today. Thanks for reading with me.